Hello Aces, welcome back to module six, lesson 2.1. In this lesson, we're talking about how do you find content ideas that your customers will completely love. Three ways to find content ideas. In this lesson, we're gonna be talking about why you need to seriously care about social media. And this is basically other people's platform. If you're not aware of what I'm talking about, definitely go back to the previous lesson to check out the difference between your home base and other people's home base. People are on social media multiple times a day, either Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, um, whatever the social media platform of choice is, but people are on them all the time. People look you up on social media and it is a true reflection of what their decision process is like. So definitely make sure that you're active on these social media platforms. And once again, previously we talked about being and dominating on one platform first before you divert to other different platforms. This is really, really key. And also people are regularly finding places to eat through social media. It is a critical touch point out there. And that's the reason why you need to seriously care about social media and for us our ice cream shop that's exactly what has happened the lineups that we get has all the thanks to do with instagram and our social medias now if you're thinking about growing your own social media platform you can consider having an in-house or out of the house help with this process. In-house is a lot cheaper, whereas out of the house can cost you thousands of dollars per month. In-house, you have full control of the whole process, whereas out of the house, you have way less control. You're relying on the expertise of the agencies. In the house, you also have a way to directly communicate with your community, and that gives you, basically allows you to have the pulse on your customers. Whereas if it's out of the house, it's really indirect communication with your community. In the house, you have authentic and accurate portrayal of what you're doing. For example, if your your chef is creating something in, in the back of the house, you can go in the back, create a story on it or take pictures of it. And it gives you that authentic relationship with your customers. Whereas if it's an out of the house environment, it, you'd have that lack of authenticity because oftentimes they curate the different types of content to push out to make sure everything is super polished. Whereas in, if it's in the house social media rep, they oftentimes lack the experience. If you were to do it yourself, you're going to lack the experience to do a really good job, making sure that all the best practices are met and kept up to date. Whereas out of the house, they have all the resources, they have been doing it for a while, and they have the expertise to help you execute and grow exponentially faster than doing it yourself. In the house, finally, it can be really time consuming for you to learn everything, for you to do everything because you just don't have the time to do everything. Your staff doesn't have the time to do everything because their focus oftentimes would be multiple different roles. They'd be serving front of the house, they'd be serving as a barista, and on top of that, they're doing your social media. Whereas if you hire an agency out of the house, it does take the workload off. Now, if you're asking me, hey, Wilson, I, I'm just starting off my restaurant. What should I do? Should I spend thousands of dollars hiring someone out of the house to help us manage the social media platform? Well, in my recommendation, I would recommend going in-house. And that's basically how we started. And, and I like just being scrappy with the stuff that I do. And that's the reason why I would recommend going in-house until you have enough cash flow, until you have proven demand, until you're profitable enough for you to outsource this process out to an agency. So definitely I, rec I would recommend hiring someone in-house or even better yet, doing it yourself. A lot of people have no time to do social media if you were to do it in-house. And that's the reason why I'll show you how we're gonna be able to create one month of content in just one day. So then that way you can batch everything up and just forget about it after doing it for one day. Now, a month of social media content in one day, are you serious? 100%, and that's the process that we followed in creating content for our ice cream shop. But 
We're going to get to that later on in the lessons following. First, the three ways to find content ideas that your customers will love, the ideas that your community will love, so then that way you're not wasting time creating content just for the sake of creating content. We talked about creating things that your customers will completely fall in love, something that is valuable. And that's the reason why we've done all the groundwork and the legwork in the previous modules, jobs to be done, understanding your customer psyche, understanding your customers really, really well. Once again, if you have not done those lessons, definitely go back to the previous lessons and do all those before coming back to this. Otherwise, if you continue creating content and without understanding your customers to the T, it is just a complete waste of time. Finding content ideas. How are you going to be able to find content ideas? Number one way is to look at what has worked. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Look at your research that you've done at your master avatar. Back to your dream dogs to see what their most engaged and liked photos are. What are dream dogs again? These are people that you follow previously. These are people that you aspire to become. These are people, uh, not people, companies that you aspire to become. It could be people, it could be companies, it could be people that you actually want to uh, be aspired to actually create a company to mimic. That's what dream dogs are. And you want to be able to stalk them. You want to understand what is some of the most engaged posts out there, some most engaged captions that they have write, written and find the patterns. Once you're able to find their top 10 performing posts, then you can categorize the posts and analyze the, 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 the type of post that they're posting, whether it's the content style, the shot style, the caption objectives, the reactions that you're getting from your fans. So for example, if your if their customers are engaging a lot with behind the scenes of the restaurants that are posting about their uh, chefs and and how they buy their uh, ingredients then this is something that you want to post about as well because people are reacting to it whereas if um, if pictures of just uh, yourself doesn't respond too well and doesn't have much engagement then that shows that your customers don't really care about a photo of you that's how you're going to be able to find the patterns by studying what other people are doing and then doubling down on the winning types of content that you see are out there. Second type, second way of finding content ideas is to look at burning questions. Okay. What are burning questions? Stuff that people are actually searching for online. How do you basically find that out? Go to answerthepublic.com and see what relevant questions people are searching for. It becomes a bank of content ideas that you can create content on and post answers to. For example, how is sushi made? What are sushi made of? How is sushi made safe to eat? What, why is sushi made with raw fish? All these are as a response coming from how is sushi made. To demonstrate this a little bit further, once you're on answerthepublic.com and you type in, for example, tacos, once you type in tacos, these are all the different questions that spawn as a, resu as a result of typing in tackle as a subject. For example, where tacos come from, where tacos live, where tacos were invented, where tacos to buy, where are they from? And then right here is who invented tacos, who made tacos. And for you, you can create a ton of content and ideas to, from these questions because these are real life questions that people are asking online. So this is a really great tool for you to utilize in finding content ideas to write about. Next up is to look at events. Search for events that are most relevant to your restaurant niche and interesting to your customers. Look at the local events that your customers care about. For example, car free days, summer fireworks, sports, playoff game day. Look at national food and lifestyle days. Basically, you just have to Google national holidays or um, holidays that are revolving around tacos and automatically a ton of different holidays would pop up. National holiday, national ice cream day, national best friend day, all these events that pop up. Now, next up, what are you going to do with it? This is a great way for you to engage with your customers. Now, how do you do that? For example, you can see how 
Chinatown's Juniper kicks off Negrini, Negroni week with Negroni inspired desserts and drinks. Find a reason to create a new item so then that way it's a new reason for your customers to come in to visit you because they care about Negroni. Right? Don't forget to be super creative with these holidays in order for you to stand out and stay relevant. Make it your own. Making your own products or promotions to celebrate National Tackle Day is also a great way. Believe it or not, that's how Taco Tuesday was born. I remember it was Taco John's, who, which is a company out in Wyoming in the United States in that created taco tuesdays because they know that every tuesday they basically don't have much business and therefore they created something called taco tuesdays they come in and buy a taco for two bucks and because they have done that because they were being creative and pioneering this whole movement nowadays taco tuesdays has is basically a movement that everyone knows about that's the creativity that you want to do with these national holidays and events. So today we talked about the three ways to find content ideas that your customers will love. Look at what is working from your competitors. Look at the burning desires and burning questions that people are asking online. And lastly, look at events, events, national or not national. These are ways for you to communicate and be creative to communicate with your customers. Now that we talked about the three ways of finding content, we're going to be talking about the three types of content you should be posting on social media. First and foremost, videos. These are the things that capture the most attention and engagement. So you must create videos in today's age, okay? It doesn't require you to be having a DSLR camera and having a high production. These things can be just a normal iPhone, a normal smartphone can do the job, okay? Some of the most viral and engaging videos are simple, but very attractive. So basically you just need to create content and be authentic to that. Don't need to overthink that. For example, cheese pulls are great viral content um, that's are out there. Popping the yolk of an egg Benny is something that people love. These are like food porn for them. Double down on this type of content that has worked, that is visually appealing, that is satisfying, and this is the type of content you should go for. Second up are photos. Photos needs to be high quality. People love high quality photos because if it's not moving, you need to be able to capture their attention. And usually pictures that are subpar are just not gonna be able to do the job. And that's the reason why you need high quality photos in order for you to actually stop them on the track and, help and, and have them read your caption. People expect non-blurry, so make sure that you compose the photos properly. The more attractive your photo, the better the chance they'll read your caption. And the more that they read your caption, the more they're going to connect with you. The whole point about social media is not just for, for us to be able to feed them something nice. It's for us to communicate with them, for us to build that trust. If we stop them on their tracks and for them to actually read our caption, that's when value is being transferred from us to them. Your caption needs to be the is the second opportunity to connect and build relationships. And once again, this is how you build trust. Consider the caption the place to story tell. We're going to be talking a lot more about captions later on in the following lessons. But nonetheless, know for a fact that creating photos that are high quality is important for your restaurant's social media game. Next up are stories, Instagram stories. If you're not familiar with Instagram stories, you must be doing that because this is basically how people are consuming content on Instagram today. People are there every day watching. It's basically having a live update of something that is unpolished, something that's behind the scenes of your favorite celebrity, of basically your favorite restaurant, and you get to see it. It's short, unpolished, and can be done on the spot. Utilize functions like super zoom, boomerang, rewind, because these things make it engaging rather than just having a raw footage of someone creating an egg Benny and popping the yolk. Maybe what you can do is create a boomerang, right? A boomerang is when the footage goes um, for two seconds and then rewinds for two seconds and it just goes on a constant loop of something like that. And these are things that are engaging. You can also utilize stickers like polls, quizzes, Q&A, and countdown. So then that way it just makes it a little bit more fun and engaging for your customers. 
hold a Q&A for your chef to answer because once again, it's all about the engagement. Do a poll about what people's favorite dessert item is. This is a great way and a great platform for you to do research about your customers. So then that way you can know, know them and study, study them a little bit more in depth. It do a quiz about one ingredient to educate your community. By you doing something like that, it's a great way to deliver value. At the end of the day, this can also be an extension to any promotions that you're running. For example, if you're running a buy one, get one free promotion, not only do you post it on your Instagram feed, but then you can also post it as an IG story. Creating content by batching. Once again, I know a lot of you guys don't have the time to sit in front of a uh, of a phone and just create content for like hours in time. You're basically having a ton of things to do at your restaurant. How are you gonna be able to take care of your social media? And it is by batching content, creating and scheduling everything in one day. That way you don't need to scramble to post each day. You don't need to think about it. You create it for one day, you commit to one day and boom, for a whole month, your social media content is all done for you. Saves you time, energy, and allows you the bandwidth to do everything else. So then that way you can take care of your social media platform while still being able to run your business. What you've learned today is the three ways to create content ideas that your customers will completely love. So do the work. Next up is creating a month of content in one day day. I've talked about this throughout this whole lesson because it's something that we have done in our ice cream shop and it has worked like a charm. And that's the reason why I want to share this secret with you. So make sure you guys go to the next lesson.